Empire. The Packers are officially back, and I'm running on fumes. <laughs> Welcome to the Football Jones Podcast. What's up, everybody? It's Mike Jones coming to you at this early hour from the Milwaukee International Airport. Crazy night last night. Big win for the Packers. Wrote my story, and the snow was coming down as I got ready to leave and leave Green Bay, drive back to Milwaukee, which should have been like an hour and 40-minute drive, but the snow was so bad, I had to drive 30 miles an hour for 118 miles, and turned out to be like a three and a half hour drive, so apologies for limited energy here. Got back, had about 90 minute nap, and I'm back here awake and at the airport. But another exciting week of playoff action. Like I said, the Green Bay Packers with a big win over the Seattle Seahawks. They had a lot of questions um, of all the teams that were in the playoffs. Uh, even though they were the number two seed, they had a lot of doubters. And um, I'm going to talk to Aaron Jones, who's been a big part of their success this year, the uh, third year running back. Um, and, and talk to him about the mindset of this team, how he carved out his role, the vision that first year head coach Matt LaFleur had for him, and how this team has gone about executing. They were not one and done, as a lot of people expected that they would be. They beat a very good Seattle Seahawks team, and now they're facing the San Francisco 49ers with the chance to play for a trip to the Super Bowl. They're 60 minutes away. And then we'll see if Aaron Rodgers can get back to the Super Bowl for the first time since that one victory in 2010. And we'll see, can Matt LaFleur beat his mentor, Kyle Shanahan? Or are the San Francisco 49ers just a little bit too much for him? We're going to talk about all that, plus the other action in uh, the divisional round. But first, our visit with Green Bay Packers running back Aaron Jones, who had two rushing touchdowns um, in his team's victory over the Seahawks. What is it about Matt? You know, I mean, he's a young guy, but he also kind of has a little bit of an old school mentality as far as believing in running the football. I know you got to like that. Oh, definitely. Uh, he just believes that you got to be balanced. And, uh, I believe that as well because you keep them guessing. Uh, I mean, you, you're running, you're passing all the same formations. You don't know what, what they're doing. And then say you start running the ball well and you have these same formations that you're running the ball out of and you go play action on these and it keeps the defense guessing. Uh, you, gives you a couple shots over their head. They're like, wow, this, like, this just happened. Like, they just ran this play, so they're preparing for that same play, and it's not that. Gotcha. What did you guys think when you guys first met Matt, and what were you guys expecting? Uh, I mean, I, I called him on the phone. I talked to him uh, before he even got here. So uh -huh. uh, he just told me kind of what, what he was looking for in the backs and uh, how he looked to use them and uh, gave me some reference points of who to go look at, uh -huh. Devontae Freeman, Tevin Coleman, uh, Todd Gurley some, and some other backs. And it's like that's how we like to use our backs. And so I went right to work right away. Uh, Working on my receiving, everything, route running. So, yeah. so it had to be, be ready. pretty exciting for you. Oh, it was, it was so exciting knowing that you're going to be uh, used every way and get the ball. It's definitely exciting. That's because, I mean, you obviously you have Aaron Rodgers, who's, you know, a future Hall of Famer, but at the same time, you're a big part. You know, the running game is such a big part of that. Oh, definitely. Anytime I can take pressure off of uh, 12 and the rest of the game, I, I feel like that's uh, my job to do, and it, it makes it easier for everybody else. And you, you, you break one on the ground, they, they're not going to know what to do on the next one. And, uh, and it opens things up for 12. What is that hesitation like that you see in the defense once you get the ground game going and then they hit them with the play action? What do you see? They, they don't know whether to step up or uh, drop. If, uh -huh. if it's play action, if we're dropping deep or if we're running the ball. Um, so I, I think that's one of the good things about having mirrored looks. Gotcha. What are this team you guys are going to play? Similar philosophy. Um, so I guess you guys got to be that much more on your P's and Q's. Uh, definitely. I mean, uh, I feel like their defense, our, similar, our offense is similar, like you said. So uh, their defense is a little accustomed to it. They get, mm -hmm. they, they've seen it all year. So um, 
just go back to the drawing board and get ready and nail the details and we'll be good. These are the games though you dream about, you know, when you're No, a definitely, kid, you know? definitely. You know. NFC Championship, uh, you, you dream about that. Uh, 60 minutes away from going to where you want to go, you just handle business, play one snap at a time and be good. That's a lesson you said to your parents that told you, you know, big time players make big plays. You know, what, do you remember the, when that lesson, when you first got that? When I was probably like eight years old, seven years old, something like that. Uh, I heard my dad say it before then, but uh -huh. like that's when it stuck with me. And, uh, we've been saying it ever since. So, were you uh, playing running back then? I was, yes, okay. sir. So, gotcha. uh, running back, basketball, and running track as well. So, gotcha. Yeah. And who was your favorite? You know, Emmitt Smith was okay. my favorite player. Okay, yes, sir. gotcha. <laughs> Good deal. All right, man. Well, thanks a lot. Appreciate your time. Thank you. That was Aaron Jones, big performance for him in his playoff debut. You could just see the excitement. Um, he was just bursting with excitement. Um, a young guy who, again, has carved out a big role. Um, and I thought that was pretty cool that um, before the job was even official that um, Matt LaFleur had reached out to him telling him, hey, look, I want you to be my Todd Gurley. I want you to be my Tevin Coleman, uh, his feature back. and. LaFleur has done a great job of using him, and it's really interesting that this is a team that has a future Hall of Fame quarterback, and Aaron Rodgers uh, could definitely drop back and throw the ball 40 times a game and would be just fine and would do it at a high level, but LaFleur believes in balance, and as, as Jones was explaining, um, you know, if you believe in balance, you commit to the run, it makes you less predictable, less, um, you know, more difficult for uh, the defense to get a bead or a read on uh, what you're doing. And the Packers definitely set up that play action pass because of their strong run game, and that led to some big pass plays. And then when the game was on the line, Aaron Rodgers did what Aaron Rodgers does, making clutch throws, and now they're on to the NFC Championship game. And it's interesting that if you look at the Packers, the 49ers, and the Titans, three of the four teams in the conference championships are teams that really believe in running the football. Um, you know, we saw Derrick Henry pick his team up, put them on his back, and power them past um, the, uh, the, the Baltimore Ravens. We saw a strong run game really serve as a catalyst for the success of the offense of the 49ers. Even though Jimmy Garoppolo um, is a quarterback that, that is a very good passer, but it all starts with balance. And, you know, we look, think of this as a passing league, but it's really interesting that this year uh, the running game really came back in style. And so it's going to be interesting to see how this thing all plays out. Um, you know, the Packers, they got embarrassed by the 49ers. Um, six games ago um, but they regrouped from that won five straight to close out the regular season one last night for six straight to show that they were not a fluke um, at 13 and three without a lot of statement wins well they got their statement win last night and um, you know there's a lot of familiarity between these two coaching staffs we'll see which one can come out on top and then in the AFC could it have gotten any crazier than that Kansas City Chiefs win over the Houston Texans. It looked like the Texans were going to just destroy them, out 21 nothing to start, and then just some really head-scratcher decisions by Bill O'Brien uh, that set up um, the, the Kansas City Chiefs with new life, and they went on a roll, um, you know, and never looked back. And I don't know if it's going to happen, but if I'm the, the, the leadership of the Texans, I'm looking at Bill O'Brien and considering making a change there because we continue to see his teams will in the playoffs and just his decision making on Sunday was not at all of a championship caliber level and you would just wonder how much further can he take this team. Uh, but we will see what happens here. This Tennessee Titans team is really compelling. Um, again, um, kind of an old school mentality. Pound that football. Great defense. A fantastic job Mike Vrabel is doing with them. But is it going to be enough to slow down Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid? Um, we don't know. It's going to be two very, very exciting games. We're going to look more towards the playoffs in the second episode of this week. But anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. I'm going to go get ready and catch a plane. Uh, thanks again for listening. If you have not already, 
download the link, send it to a friend, share it, read me at usatoday.com, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, at by Mike Jones, and email me, mjones at usatoday.com, and I will talk to you guys later this week.